We're looking at uh, real salvation, uh, real sanctification. Uh, when you think about being uh, sanctified, you think about the Lord Jesus, and that comes to our study here in the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Now we realize that love produces this joy and peace mentioned there in uh, uh, verse 22, and really that comes from communion with. With, with the Godhead, fellowship with God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit. Then we come to the word long-suffering, and we, we, we understand that God is long-suffering, and He's forbearing. But see, what is long-suffering? Well, we, we, we turn to it as one's reaction to hurt, or injuries, or we think of verbal or physical provocation, when you are provoked, and uh, what you do is that you react in a way uh, without retaliation. But notice here, as we remember God's long suffering and forbearance to us, we also suffer long. Now we understand it's, 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 this is the fruit of the Holy Spirit. This is supernatural. Uh, we need grace. We need the, the work of the Holy Spirit. But we have the Holy Spirit in us. We have God, the Son giving us that example that we can uh, follow. And then also we have men and women, uh, Lord, uh, we, we have uh, other Christians that set forth with example too of long suffering. You see, we seek not to retaliate. We do not uh, avenge ourselves. Uh, we don't get even, as it were. We are long suffering. Now we look at this word gentleness. And again, this is the second triad, and it's 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 uh, graces, uh, fruit towards uh, one another. Okay, towards others. Okay. Uh, gentleness. Now we, we think of that as an action. Long suffering is a reaction. We don't retaliate. We don't, uh, it says, get even. But we do act, okay, in this idea of gentleness. And our action is that, that what long suffering produces. See, gentleness is a heart disposition of wanting, seeking to repay in kindness, not in kind. How often we you know, we realize that someone hurts us, provokes us, or speaks evil, or injures us, uh, persecution, suffering, whatever it may be, we want to avenge ourselves, we want to act in kind, but no, no, we repay in kindness. Kindness seeks opportunity uh, to do good. Now think of the word goodwill. Do you have goodwill towards your brothers and sisters in Christ? Do you have goodwill towards those sinners and other people around us and loved ones? And we're not saying that sinners is in a, as a derogatory um, uh, uh, word or anything. We're just saying that for those that do not love the Lord Jesus, those that do not hate evil, but, and, and we, we, we work with, with uh, uh, sinners just like we are, saved by grace. Uh, but see, do you have goodwill towards your neighbors, your friends, maybe at school, at work? That's the idea of, of, of kindness. Now, again, uh, this idea of, re, re, of retaliation, avenging, uh, common verse, let me just read it to you again. Look at Romans 12. As we try to put this all together, what, what, long, what love produces, what long suffering and uh, gentleness, all working together. In Romans 12, 18, it says, If it be possible, as much as life in you, live peaceably with all men, Dearly beloved, avenge not yourselves, but rather give place unto wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine, I will repay, said the Lord. Therefore, if thine enemy hunger, feed him. If he thirst, give him drink. For in so doing, thou shalt heap coals of fire on his head. Be not overcome, overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. Notice that. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. And that's our next... Uh, our, our next fruit of the Spirit. It says the uh, long-suffering, gentleness, and goodness. How do you overcome evil with good? Well, you have to start with gentleness. And then you have to go one back, we have to go one more step back. You have to be long-suffering. <clears throat> and we'll see how all those fit together. This word gentleness is, is, is one has said it this way. It is the delicate ministry of love. Gentleness is the delicate, delicate ministry of love. So let's look at this word goodness. Now, 
Uh, when we take a look at this word goodness, uh, we have a meaning for it. The root, means, uh, root meaning means benefit, or what we would think of beneficial, uh, useful. For example, when you think of uh, the Lord Jesus as a good shepherd, I believe uh, the word is, is going to be uh, good, intrinsically, goodly, fair, beautiful. Meaning, the idea is that he, he, he is a beneficial good shepherd. He went around doing good. He's beneficial. He's, he's in a sense, uh, uh, he's a benefit to others as, as he is our good shepherd. And so this word goodness, uh, different meanings uh, or different Greek words used for goodness, but it has a word, the idea of benefit, beneficial, readiness to do good. For example, uh, when we think about, turn to, if you would, uh, Luke 8.15, and we'll show you uh, try not to, a little little Greek lesson, but not try to overload us. But uh, look at Luke eight fifteen. See, there are two basic two basic Greek words. There's a few other, but basically two for good. The one word is good in character or constitution, and the other is good intrinsically or goodly, fair, or beautiful. Now, if you look at eight uh, Luke eight fifteen. No said, but that on the, the good ground are they which in an honest and good heart, having heard the word, keep it and bring forth fruit with patience. Now, uh, the idea of being good, well, that's, that's what we have there in, uh, in Galatians chapter uh, 5, verse 22. Goodness, being good, okay, the idea is that we have a good heart. Then there's this word, this other Greek word, uh, doing good. Doing good. Now, uh, the actions can be good actions, but it might, it might not be from a good heart. <laughs> Think of that for a minute. There, there are a lot of people that do, do quote unquote good things, but their heart is not good. So here we see in Luke 8.15, as I try to explain this, you see, uh, the good ground, the, that word good is, is basically uh, good intrinsically, it's, it's, it's productive. Uh, are they which in, the, in an honest, that's another word for good, <laughs> okay, intrinsically, meaning useful, and a good heart. Notice it says, but that on the, the good ground are they which in, in an honest and good heart, I mean, the good heart means their heart is good, it's been made good. Having heard the word. And so there's, is being good, that's where the heart has been changed, we will, we'll talk about that in a minute. And then there is doing good. Being good is intrinsically, constitutional, you're good. Okay? And then there's the idea of doing good. Now, and so here in, in Galatians chapter 5, okay, verse 22, we have the first one in a sense, is good in character or constitution. You see, we, we, have, we do good because we have a good heart. We have a new heart. Okay? But let's go on for a minute here. You see, there's different words for goodness, but there's, there, what is the difference between goodness and gentleness? Now, uh, gentleness, remember, is a kindly disposition towards others. We would say goodwill. Wanting to do something good. Well, goodness is, is a kindly activity on that one's behalf, that you actually do something good. It's not just wanting, or let's say you heart to this position, you say, well, I want to, I want to have, I have goodwill towards this person. You actually go out and you do good for them. You do good to them. Now, let's look at the difference between gentleness and goodness for a minute. Um, goodness includes uh, rebuke and uh, discipline, while gentleness can only help. You see, think of this for a minute. Uh, the, the Lord Jesus showed uh, goodness uh, as he cleansed the temple. Think of that. He showed goodness. He did something good, right? When he cleansed the temple. But see, the Lord Jesus showed gentleness to the woman who anointed his feet. There's a little difference. Goodness is love in action. Now, let's, let's take it a little further. So there's different words for goodness. One speaks of 
a uh, good in character, a constitution, a good heart. One is good intrinsically, meaning it's like a good hammer, it's useful, it's beneficial. And then we see there's a difference between uh, gentleness and goodness. But let me give you this illustration, I think it's, it's interesting. Um, remember I said, people can, uh, uh, people can, quote, do good things, right? And their heart may not be right or good. But goodness versus righteousness, uh, John MacArthur gives this illustration. He says this, a righteous person could evict a widow for not paying her rent. Would that be a good thing? It's a righteous sin. Well, righteousness is good, George. Now, I'll get you there, huh? But, 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 <laughs> was, okay. We would say, well, righteousness is following the standard. Goodness would pay the bill for her. Goodness would pay the bill for her. And so this, this idea of uh, different words for goodness, okay, but also we see that the difference between, between gentleness and goodness, and finally, see, goodness is love in action. Though the person might have all right, and it is a good standard, you know, like, you know, uh, you know, you don't pay your rent, you get evicted. But goodness goes on further and says, look, I'm going to pay her rent. Instead of evicting her, I'm going to pay her rent. But let's look at the, the, the idea here tonight that God is good. God is good. Matthew 19, 17. 17, 16 and 17. Let me read that to you. Matthew 19, 16 and 17. This is when the rich young ruler came to the Lord Jesus. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, what good thing shall I do that I may have eternal life? You see, like he's, he's caught up on good. What's really good? Is he good in heart? Does he, good, does he, good, does he do good things? And so, this is the Lord's reply. And he said unto him, why callest thou me good? There is none good but one, that is God. But if thou wilt enter into life, keep the commandments. What is the Lord Jesus saying to this man? Well, first of all, he's talking about God's nature. God is good. It's his, his nature. It's constitutional. He's, he's good. Uh, but also, God... Does not the, God does everything that's good, and His good works abound. Again, good. <clears throat> and as they, we see here, what the Lord was telling us, uh, by he, as He, uh, in a sense, works with this rich young ruler, we're seeing uh, the Lord is reminding us of something. Okay? He's reminding us that there is none good. No, not one. None of us are good. I mean, again, uh, let me read the verses. Matthew 19, 16. And behold, one came and said unto him, Good master, okay? What good thing must I do? You see, where his, his mindset was. Uh, he's a good master. He's a good person. I can do good things. Okay? And the Lord says, No, no, no. Why callest thou me good? And we know the Lord Jesus is good, but the idea is that as a, as a man, he's standing before this young man. He says, There is none good but one that is God. And so I believe uh, the Lord is, is, is going to direct the man uh, to the commandments and the standard. But you see, he's going to uh, remind us tonight that none of us measure up to God's goodness. The Bible clearly says that all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay, how good do you have to be to get to heaven? Hmm, think about that for a minute. Or how gentle do you have to be? How long suffering? How about how, how loving do you have to be? You see, that's no. Well, I, I, I do. I tithe. I, I give. I do good. I do good deeds to people. Well, I do good deeds. Yes, yeah. But are they perfect? That's what they have to be. They have to be perfect, like the Lord Jesus. And so it says, when all of sin and fallen short of the glory of God, and the Lord God is saying to Paul, says, the Lord Jesus is the standard. If you want to get to heaven and you want to get to God's favor, you're going to have to be as perfect and as good 
as the Lord Jesus, in thought, word, and deed. And, and that, that just leaves us all out, right? <coughs> Notice here, uh, one of those verses that, that we often quote, or I believe is part of the, uh, that Paul uses to bring sinners, awaken sinners, is Romans 3.12. It says, uh, Romans 3.12 says, They are all gone out of the way, they are all together become unprofitable, there is none that doeth good, no, not one. And it's interesting, I often quote that verse, or, or mention that verse, and realizing last week that that word there is, is the word for gentleness, kindness. You see, what, what Paul is really saying through the Holy Spirit is using to say, not only that they don't do acts of goodness, they don't even have a heart disposition of kindness. Remember I said, you're going to have to be long-suffering, your, your, your reaction towards injury, and then what? There's gentleness and kindness steps in, what? You have a heart of goodwill, a disposition to do kindness, and then what happens is that actually in goodness you do the acts of goodness, the works of goodness. And so here, it says we don't even have, a, we don't need a heart, there's, there's no kindness there. Um, See, gentleness there, or kindness, is a kind disposition towards others. You know, no, no, we, we, we don't have the heart. It's from the heart. But also Paul says there, as, as we think about being reminded about the Lord Jesus, when he says, uh, Why thou, thou callest me good? Paul says, In me, in my flesh, dwelleth no good thing. Romans 7, 18. What is he saying there? He's saying that our goodness is, is, doesn't come from, it doesn't or, or originate in us. Our goodness, or whatever goodness we may see in society, is, is not because we are good, or good people, or that we have good hearts. We are sinners uh, by choice, and sinners by practice, and by birth, you see. Um, first, a heart must be changed. A new tree, a new heart. You must be born of God. So, the Lord says, a good man, out of the good treasure of his heart, bring you forth that which is good. But it also says, an evil man out of an evil treasure of his heart bringeth forth that which is evil. You see, there's only two camps. Either you have a good heart, a new heart, born again, spirit of God in you, or you have an evil heart. You have freedom, free agency. You pick into your heart that treasure box, and what is in the treasure box? If it's evil, that's what you can pick out. Now, we understand we appear to be good. We do good things. But if it wasn't for the restraining hand of God, and it, so, so when, when, the, when Paul says, in me dwelleth no good thing, in my flesh, in my fallen humanness, he's saying basically that this goodness that I manifest is the fruit of the Spirit. This good heart, this good disposition, this good will, this long suffering is all because of what God the Holy Spirit is doing in me and I'm yielding. That's real sanctification, brother. That's real adoption. God restrains by His grace. Psalm 76, 10. Surely the wrath of men shall praise thee. What does that mean? Surely the wrath of men shall praise thee. It means in the sense that God restrains all the evil in the world. And if it wasn't for His restraining hand, yes, we would be, uh, in a sense, break out in hell, in, uh, in total de depravity, and all the, the uh, demonic activity. But God restrains it all. God you see, we're as good as we can be, or as good as we, we are tonight, uh, in the world, or what we, what we see in the world, is because God is restraining. Restraining. And I believe God uses His people as salt and light, and that's part of the restraining process. But, you see, when the Lord came to the rich young ruler, or the rich young ruler came to the Lord, He says, uh, why does that call me good? There's none good but God. You see, first of all, God is good, and that tells us, in the light of His gloriousness, that we're not good. And we're not good by nature. We don't have good hearts. And we do good things, quote-unquote, but it's not because we glorify God, or, you know, until we're saved, until we have a new heart, until we're trusting Christ by faith. And then we begin to do those things that are pleasing in His sight, through Jesus Christ. God is good. Now think about that for a minute. What do you say to a, to a person who maybe loses their little baby, or loses their parents in a car accident? 
Or like, like there in Georgia, I remember when we were teaching in the day school. I was teaching in the day school and uh, we had a teacher's meeting. It was a parent, you know, PTA meeting, you know, teachers and parents get together and we were at the school and stuff like that. And we're, we had, it was a good time. The teachers, parents, students, and all this stuff, the whole program. And then on the, um, on the uh, way home, a dear sister and her daughter uh, got in an accident. A drunk ran into them and killed her. Killed the dear sister. Is God good? Is God good? I mean, it was probably one of the, 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 the most, I mean, the presence of God in that, that service, that funeral was, that home going was unbelievable. It was, I, I still remember it to this day. Can you say God is good? I remember my, my sister-in-law, Gaylin uh, uh, Smith. She was about my age. Uh, we, were, we were about the same age, and uh, uh, like Gaylin uh, married uh, Clyde, Kathy's brother. He's younger. Uh, I'm older than Kathy, so Gaylin and I were about the same age. So five, seven years ago, when we we're, were in the early 50s, um, she, she came home from the mission field uh, there in Papua New Guinea, uh, sick, couldn't figure out what it was, she had pan pancreatic cancer, within weeks she died. <clears throat> Is God good? You know what her last words were, or her, 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 her triumph of uh, uh, attitude towards the whole thing, you know, she's 52, I think, 53, I, I, you know, I, you can set me straight on the exact age, and, and uh, you know, young, and and, but her, her triumph of uh, saying was this, God is good, God is good all the time. God is good all the time. And she passed into eternity, two, little, two young men, two boys, uh, Noah and, and uh, Benson. It, it, was, it was devastating, but you see, the testimony of Galen was that God is good. God is good all the time. Notice here, in creation, in uh, Genesis 1-4, we have to go back to Genesis 1-4, it says, And God saw the light that it was good, and God divided the light from the darkness. But look at Genesis 1-31, And God saw everything that he had made, and behold, it was very good. Very good. You see, you sh what should expect? That's that's what we should expect from God. Everything is very good. Everything He does is absolutely good. And it's something that years ago, as a young Christian, I, I couldn't understand the sovereignty of God and all the things that are happening. And and you know, uh, but I realized, and I have this conviction, and I still have it today. Whatever happens. Whatever happens, God is good. And that's my conviction. I, I, you know, I, again, I don't understand the wars and people dying and babies dying and the dear sister dying and uh, my sister, you know, but all I, I know tonight is that I stand by the firm of the revelation of Scripture. God is good. God is good all the time. But notice here, it's part of His glory. Notice in Exodus for a minute, as we think of God is good. Look at Exodus 33, 19. This is, this is amazing if you think about it. Now remember, Exodus, Moses said, let me see your glory. And uh, the Lord says, I'm going to pass by the top of the rock, and you're going to see the hinder, hinder parts, you know. And there the Lord declares his, his name. But notice it says in Exodus 30, 33, 19, maybe something you've never noticed before. I can't say I, I did, actually. And in verse 13, uh, 19. And he said, this is the Lord, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. Isn't that amazing? <clears throat> he says, I will make all my goodness pass before thee, and I will proclaim the name of the Lord before thee, and will be gracious to whom I will be gracious, and will show mercy on him on whom I will have show mercy. Then in Exodus 34, 6, and the Lord passed before him and proclaimed, the Lord, the Lord God, merciful and gracious, long-suffering, abundant in goodness and truth. You see, he says, God says, I'm going to let all my goodness pass by. And then as he proclaimed his name, the glory of God and his person, his nature, 
It says, God is good. God is good. Abundant in goodness and truth. Notice how God is good to Israel. How good God was to Israel. Now there's a saying, or there's a saying that I picked up in, in the scriptures. It's the good hand of my God. The good hand of my God. You expect that. In creation, God created everything good. Very good. And then, you see, His glory, uh, He said, my goodness will pass by. And then how God has dealt with Israel and how God has dealt with you and I, it, it is the good hand of my God. Remember, gentleness is a helping hand. It's a willingness, I want to help. I have goodwill. Okay? Goodness is a handout or a hand up. Remember I said long-suffering, what long-suffering is? It's not a backhand. You know what a backhand is, right? You know, God, and I'm not trying to be uh, uh, profane or anything in the sense that, you know, long-suffering means that God is not going to, uh, He's forbearing, He's not going to give us what we deserve. He's not going to pour out His wrath upon us. He's not going to give us that backhand. He's going to give us what? That helping hand, because He's general. He's gentle. He's kind. He's going to be... Do, he's going to do good. He's going to not only hand out, a hand up. He's going to give us the Lord Jesus. And, and this phrase, uh, the good hand of my God. I want you to think about that. The good hand of my God. Ezra 5, the uh, first time Ezra 8, 18. Now it's interesting. It's mentioned in Ezra and Nehemiah. Why is that, why is that significant? We think of Israel back on the land, right? The Babylonian captivity. The Lord would say, no, no, you're not going to say anymore that the Lord brought you out of Egypt. He says, he's going to say that the Lord brought you out of, uh, out of Babylon. He brought you into the land. And there is the Reformation. There is the revival. Nehemiah and Ezra. So Ezra 8.18. Ezra 8.18 says this. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding, the son of Maliah. The son of Levi. And he goes on. But notice again. Ezra 8, 18. And by the good hand of our God upon us, they brought us a man of understanding. Look at Nehemiah 2, 8. Remember Nehemiah 2? Well, remember the, the man comes to Nehemiah. Uh, he's there in the court and he tells us the condition of Israel. And then uh, Nehemiah purposes in his heart to, to, to go before the king with a sad countenance. Nehemiah 2.8, and a letter unto Ahaz, the, uh, the, the uh, keeper of the king's force, that he may give me timber to make beams for, for the gates of the palace which apprehended to the house, and for the wall of the city, this is the rebuilding of Jerusalem, okay, and for the, and the house that I shall enter unto, and the king granted me according to what? To the good hand of my God upon me. I think that's wonderful. See, Nehemiah came into the king and said, and the king says, why, why are your countenance sad? Why, what's going on? He says, my, my people, my, my city, they're ruined. And, 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 and the king said, well, what do you want to do about it? And Nehemiah had a plan, right? But he saw. What did he see? What did Nehemiah? It was the good hand of my God. The good hand. We could go to Job 2.8. Job 2.8 says, but he said unto me, and, and this is, this is uh, not so much the, the hand, of, hand of our God, but notice what Job says to his wife. But he said unto her, Thou speakest as one of the foolish women speaketh. What? Shall we receive good at the hand of God? Yeah, so it is there. I thought it was it there. Shall we receive good at the hand of God? And shall not we receive evil? And all of this did not Job sin with his lips. Could you imagine, you know, all that Job, uh, his prosperity, his family, his, his, uh, everything that he had, he says, shall we receive good at the hand of God, the good hand of God? Let me give you one more. Psalm 34, 8. Oh, taste and see that the Lord is good. Blessed is a man that trusted in him. And the, the idea, you see, the handout, the, you know, God's hand, he's handing up, he's, he's reaching down, and what happens is we taste and see that the Lord is good. 
You know, there's, there's so many testimonies, so many scriptures in the Old Testament about God's goodness, about God being good. You can get, spend uh, hours and hours looking through the Psalms and the Proverbs and, and the poetic books and see over and over the, the saints of God saying, God is good. God's goodness, God's goodness. Let me just give you a couple and then we'll go on. Psalm 73, verse 1. Psalm 73, verse 1. It says, Truly God is good to Israel, even to such as are of a clean heart. Notice it. Truly God is good to Israel. And even in the end times, we realize that God is still going to be good to Israel. As uh, yeah, He changes His program from the church to Israel, and He brings Israel back, the remnant back. Uh, finally, look at the, the uh, Isaiah 63, 7. This is, uh, I think, an uh, encompassing uh, summary of God's goodness to Israel. God is good. God is, was good to Israel. God is going to be good to Israel in the end, too. Look at Isaiah 63, 7. Isaiah says, I will mention the loving kindnesses of the Lord and the praises of the Lord. According to all that the Lord hath bestowed on us, and the great goodness towards the house of Israel, which he hath bestowed on them according to his mercies and according to the multitude of his loving kindness. You see, God it, it, it is good. God was good and is good to Israel. But let's go on here. You see, when the rich young ruler came to the Lord Jesus, he says, uh, Good Master, what good thing must I do? And the Lord Jesus says, Why callest thou me good? There's only one that is good, and that's God. You see, he was including himself, wasn't he? The Lord Jesus? I believe he was. Now, I understand as, as he's standing man to man, the, the God man and, and, the, and the mediator, you see, uh, the prime objective of the Lord Jesus in evangelism, and that's a good portion on evangelism, he wanted to show, show the rich young ruler that there's none good, no, not one. There's only one person that's good, that's God. And so let's measure up your goodness. And he goes, says, let's, let's go to the commandments. Let's go to the Ten Commandments. Let's see how good you are. Let me see how righteous you are. And of course, we know the rich young ruler failed. But see, when the Lord Jesus uh, said, there's none good but uh, none good but God. He, he was included. He was, in a sense, he was. He is God. We know that, the God man. And so, as we look at that, how God is good all the time, we can uh, come to to the conclusion that the Lord Jesus is good. Remember the good shepherd when he came to you. He came to seek and to save that which was lost. He gave his life to be a ransom for many. For the lost sheep. And again, that word good there has the idea is beneficial, benefactor. And so turn to Acts 10 38, and you'll see uh, the Lord, this, I mentioned it last week, but it's such a, you know, if you want a summary verse of the Lord Jesus, you could, you could spend hours and hours in, in, uh, in the Gospels uh, looking at what the Lord Jesus did. But here's a verse that sums it up of, of the Lord's goodness Acts 10 38. How God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Ghost and with power, who went about went around about doing good and healing all that were oppressed of the devil, for God was with him. Notice doing good. That, that's the word benefactor. He went around doing good. He was a worker of good. <laughs> that's amazing. He was a worker of good. I think of years, years ago we, we did a study. On the, uh, about the Lord Jesus on an average Sabbath day. We, I think it was through Mark. We were looking at when we were going through the Gospel of Mark in the morning. And uh, we, we started like from the, from the morning to the evening, one Sabbath day that he spent and what he did in that one Sabbath day. And it just blew me away of the enormous amount of work. You see, we could, uh, we could talk about his, his miracles, we could talk about his healings, him raising people from the dead, feeding the multitudes, casting out the devils. We could, we could see him receiving sinful men, women, the woman at the well, 
the woman of the city there in Simon's house. He received Zacchaeus. He received Matthew. He received Saul of Tarsus. I mean, it seemed, you know, like he had time. I love looking at the Gospels, and it's, it's so amazing. When someone comes to the Lord and says, Lord, I have this need, what does he do? He drops everything and goes. <laughs> Next time you read the Gospels. When someone comes up, we have a need, he goes. When, when there's a need there, he goes. You see, we're talking about the Lord Jesus, the worker of good. God is good all the time. He suffered and died. But not before that, he, uh, but he did good there on the cross. I mean, how many of us would think of doing good there in our final moments when the thief on the cross next to him and said, uh, Lord, remember me uh, when you come into your kingdom. And he says, you were, uh, this day you shall be in paradise with me. And so he did good even on the very moments. And, then, and he's giving his last sayings. He says, to give them, for they know what, for they know not what they do. See, that's goodness, brother. The Lord Jesus is good all the time. All the time. 1 Peter 2.23 says this, Who when he was reviled, reviled not again. When he suffered, he threatened not, but committed himself to him that judges right. You see, that's goodness. You see, long-suffering is the sense that it's the reaction. The Lord was long-suffering. He was forbearing. He could have called down 12 legions of angels, but he didn't. He knew that he had to suffer. There in gentleness, he, he, he there in the Last Supper, he's saying, I, I know you're troubled, I know you're, you're concerned, your hearts are troubled. But he, he was getting the disciples ready uh, for his resurrection. You see, the Lord Jesus is good all the time, brother. He is good all the time. And I, I like, you know, the idea of uh, his patience when after the resurrection and and he faces the unbelief of, of the men. And he, you know, the slow of heart. And they don't understand. And they don't perceive. But you know, by the day of Pentecost, uh, they, they perceive and understand. He's ascended on high. And he pours out the Holy Spirit. Let me conclude with this. It says, the fruit of the Spirit is long-suffering and gentleness, goodness. That's the second triad. And that is what we say, man -wood. God is good. Psalm 33, 5. He that loveth righteousness and judgment, he loveth righteousness and judgment, the earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. So let's, let's take it home for our own selves, our own hearts. You see, we, take, we say the fruit of the Spirit is, is love, joy, peace, um, suffering, gentleness, goodness. Notice what it says in the Scriptures here. In Ephesians 5, 9. For the fruit of the Spirit is in all goodness and righteousness and truth. You see, there should be, in a sense, the, one of the um, outstanding marks of a Christian is that they are about doing good. About doing good. See, they have a heart uh, disposition. It's called kindness and gentleness. They want to be helping a helping hand, they want goodwill towards a fellow man, and it doesn't just stop there. Like, I hope so, I wish I could do something. Like, like, like uh, James says and John says, you know, he says to the man that comes in, I think it's John, First John, he says the man comes into the, and, and you know, and he, he has needs, and you say, well, may the Lord bless, and may he be clothed, may he be warmed, and, 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 and you don't give uh, that person their, their, what they need. He says, how does, how does the love of God go in your heart? You see, it's not just wanting to do something. And I'm so glad God does look at the motives, right? He does look at the heart and say, Well, Lord, I like to do this. But at times, I, I don't, it doesn't uh, fruition. It doesn't come to pass. And God does look at the motives or the heart's intents and what we do want to do and desires. And, and he, he blesses that. But you see, it, it, it's when we do goodness. Let me give you a couple more verses. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 Again, we're applying to ourselves. We ought to be good. We ought to be filled with goodness. We ought to be good workers. Uh, uh, workers of God, doing goodness. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 Again, this is in a matter of retaliation. When somebody hurts you, provokes you, injures you. 
where you have to manifest long suffering. 1 Thessalonians 5.15 See that none render evil for evil unto any man, but ever follow that which is good, both among yourselves and to all men. And I was thinking of that verse back in Romans 12. Be not overcome of evil. That was one of the first verses, part of it, I remember memorizing as a young Christian. Be not overcome of evil, but overcome evil with good. How, how are you going to overcome evil in this world? Is by doing good. And we're not talking about, uh, you know, uh, you know, social goodness and, you know, all, all this... Uh, uh, no, no, we're talking about Holy Spirit goodness. We're talking about Christians doing it for the right motive, for the glory of God, because they love the Lord Jesus, they love God, and they love their fellow man. Look at 3 John 1.11. 3 John 1.11. Again, this idea of uh, goodness when retaliation. Beloved, 3 John 1.11. Beloved, follow not that which is evil, but that which is good. He that doeth good is of God, but he that doeth evil hath not seen God. And so we ought to be doing good. Now, could you, could you, you think the Lord, if you ask the Lord this tomorrow morning, say, Lord, um, could you bring someone into my pathway that I might show goodness to them? Do you think the Lord would answer that? Think of that for a minute. I mean, how many times on, on Wednesday night I pray, when I get done praying, we're, we're almost done praying, I say, Lord, make us a blessing. Bring somebody into our pathway tomorrow. Someone has needs. Help us uh, to, to get beyond ourselves and what we have. We have we have needs. We have concerns. But see, there are people that, that come along and say, well, I want to be able to do good to them. I want to be able to minister to them. I want them to, I want them to know Christ. But I understand they have physical needs and maybe financial needs and other needs and all this other stuff. But you see, I want to pray, Lord, make me a blessing. Help me to be good and show goodness. You see, I'm overwhelmed, actually. Again, uh, we, could, we can compare this. As we look at the Lord Jesus uh, and God being good to Israel, the Lord Jesus in, in, the, in the Gospels of all the good things He did, uh, I'm also overwhelmed over the number of verses in the New Testament, in the Epistles, that, that exhort us, that command us, that instruct us to be doing good works. To be maintaining good works. Following after that which is good. I, I mean, there was, if, again, uh, uh, there's, there's too many. I, I could take all night long here, actually. <laughs> Looking at all these, these verses about being faithful and maintaining in good works. To glorify the Lord Jesus. Let me close with this. Our responsibility in this labor of love is to both provoke one another to love and good works. How do you do that, brother? When was the last time you provoked your brother to love and good works? How about a good example? How about self-sacrificing? Then we have also James 4.17. Turn there. Read this with me. What does this mean? This is quite convicting. There's no, uh, there's no uh, excuse. James 4.17. James 4.17 says, Therefore, to him that knoweth to do good, and doeth it not, to him it is sin. Wow. That's, that's pretty heavy, isn't it? Well, we, we have the example of the Lord Jesus. He's good all the time. We have the example of how God was good to Israel and to us. Uh, his goodness is, is just, uh, what was it, Psalm 33? Um, let, me, let me get this psalm here. It says, um, Psalm 33, 5. He loveth righteousness and judgment. The earth is full of the goodness of the Lord. Now just think, brother, if, if God... Goodness <laughs> and his good works and his holy work did not fill the earth today, tonight. What this earth would be like. Wow. I mean, the, the hell, the, 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 the wickedness, 
I think of like, uh, like in the days before Noah, before the flood. So James 4.17 is, a, is a, uh, a hard verse, isn't it? He that knoweth to do good and doeth it not to him, it is a sin. We know what to do. We have to do, we have to, have to do good. What is our hope? Our responsibility, our labor of love, we are to provoke one another to love and good works. We are to, we're to do what's good. James tells us that. Our hope, well, I was thinking of Psalm 23, 6. Maybe you can sing it with me. Psalm 23, 6. What is it? Surely mercy and goodness shall follow me all the days. All the days of my life, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days, all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. And I shall feast at the table. Surrender, <clears throat> repent of your sins and bow to King Jesus. <clears throat> Goodness and mercy. Our prayer in this in closing verses, Hebrews 13, 21. The Hebrew writer says, Make you perfect in every good work to do his will, working in you that which is well pleasing in his sight through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. You see, this is fruit of the Spirit. This is goodness. This is uh, where God, Holy Spirit, has to help you to be good and do good. From the heart, brother, with that, we've talked about gentleness and kindness, where we have this good will, we have this disposition to do good, okay? And so that's our prayer. But notice here, have you forgotten Romans 8.28? What is Romans 8.28? And we know that all things work together for good. Why? Because God is good all the time. You see, it is, it is just, I, I, again, that verse is just uh, overwhelming to me. Exodus 33, 19. Uh, he said, I will make all my goodness pass before thee. The whole, the whole attributes, all the attributes of God, as it were, as he's going to display his glory to Moses. He says, this is all my goodness. God hasn't changed. God is good all the time. And so we, we have to remember Romans 8, 28. And we know that all things work together for good to them that love God and to them who are, that are called according to his purpose. And remember, brother, James says, What? Let me get it. Every good gift, every perfect gift is from above and cometh down from the Father of lights. Every good gift, every perfect gift cometh down from God who is good all the time. All the time. So dear ones, listen. Long suffering. This is, this is the second triad in summer, real quick. And I want you to think about this. Long-suffering is a reaction. Remember I said, the, and, the hand of the, uh, and, the hand of my, and the good hand of my God was with me. And see, that, that idea of long-suffering is where God doesn't backhand us. That's what we deserve, don't it? He should backhand us all the way to hell. But He doesn't do that. He's forbearing. And so we are to be long-suffering. To those that provoke us, that injure us, that speak evil of us. I don't know about you, I, I, I need God, Holy Spirit, to help me do that. And then gentleness is, a, an, a, is an action. Instead of retaliation, instead of giving the backhand, 
It's a kindly disposition towards others. I say there's a, there's a willingness to want to help. It first has to be in the heart. Okay? Remember I said, that woman, uh, the, remember I said, a righteous man, this, the guy that was righteous, he said, you know, there's a widow who, who couldn't pay his, her rent. And so he was right. He was, you know, he, he evicted her. That would have been right. But the better thing to do, in goodness, right, was to pay her rent. Well, before goodness, there has to be kindness, gentleness. There has to be a disposition. I want, you know, God showed me a helping hand. I want, you know, it's like you, you, uh, you're scouting out, you're looking for opportunities to do good. So is that, is that how you run your day? <laughs> I've tried. Do you? I think we can. It's expected of us. And so generous is a kind of disposition towards, um, a, kindly, a kindly disposition towards others, a helping hand. And goodness, remember we said, is a kindly activity on their behalf. It's a handout, a hand up. You see, we, we go to them and we do good to them. How do we do good to them? I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. And pray for them which despisely use you and persecute you. I mean, I think that one of the prime examples that I think of is uh, Corey Ten Boom. You ever read uh, The Hiding Place? It's been a while since I've read it. And um, she, was, she was talking about the guard that uh, was instrumental in the death of her sister. The guard became a believer. And somehow their, their paths crossed. And it was like, you know, she had to forgive the man. Okay, she, you know, and she, so the love worked in her heart. And there was that gentleness and there was that, that goodness in where she embraced the man. And I, I can't imagine, you know, you know, you talk about people that suffered. And she suffered, her sister suffered, and, and she hated that man. Was it the same? But I say unto you, love your enemies. Bless them that curse you. Do good to them that hate you. Let me give you one more story and we'll be done. The missionary story. You've probably heard it before. It was, it was Chinese Christians. These dear Christian brother talks about how uh, he had a rice field. And he may have heard the story, but let me just explain it to apply it. He had a rice field and he'd go out and and he was watering God's blessing him. He's watering his rice field. And his neighbors despised him and was jealous. And so they would come down and, and, and break up the dams and the water would come out and stuff like that. And, 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 and he couldn't figure out why would these guys do that. And they were all, you know, they Christians and stuff like that. And they hate Christians. And, and so he, he goes up and he, 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 he fix up his, his uh, rice field again. And he, he, what he, he waters his white field. And, and uh, next day, you know, next week. The, the people do the same thing. Came in and destroys right field. Let the water out. And he said, Lord, what am I supposed to do? What did he do? What did he do? The way the story goes is that he got up early in the morning and he went and watered his neighbor's rice field all around him. He got up early and he watered his neighbor's rice field and fixed up their rice field. And it stopped. Don't, don't be overcome with evil, but overcome evil with good. You know, you, you, we think about our day, man. Listen, we, we know there's a lot of scary people out there. There's a lot of people that want to do you harm, take your money, take your life. You know, it's hard to do, to, to, you, you can't read hearts, can't you? We can't, right? People call it the church. Hey, you got any change? You, any, you know, and, and not just them, but there, there's others that are more sophisticated, right? <laughs> And what are we? We're, we're, we're to be like as what lambs, sleep sheep for the slaughter, wise as you know serpents and gentle as doves. Try a little bit of goodness, and see how far we go. I challenge you. Let's pray. Father, thank you for this time. Lord, we the real sanctification be like Christ. We thank you for the love, the joy, and peace as we commune with you. And we know that this is unconditional love, everlasting love that will never change. 
And when we think about that, we, we're filled with, with the joy. And then as we go through trials and testings, it says, my peace I leave you, I give to you. And the world can't give that peace, and the world can't take that peace. But it says, he will, it says uh, you will keep him in perfect peace whose mind is stayed upon thee. And we, we fail in our thinking many times. And then we come to this long suffering, and oh, help us to be reminded how long suffering you are towards us. How you, in a sense, put up with us, but also how you are so gentle and kind and so good. Father, we, we are challenged tonight and we ask for grace. We know that no human disposition, no human effort, uh, no genetics is going to get this done. It's going to be through the power of the Holy Spirit. And it's also going to be when we put our eyes on the Lord Jesus. And help us to remember that if, if the Lord says, if, you, if you've done it unto one of least of my brothers, you've done it unto me. So help us to look beyond the person that comes to us in a way and help us uh, that we might serve. He says, he that lend it to the poor and lend it to give it to the Lord. We ask for grace for that. So Lord, help us now. Help us to be a blessing. Lord, help us, uh, those, of, those good works that you have ordained for us to walk in, let us uh, be busy in the sense of uh, uh, being on alert, waiting for good works, waiting for doors to open, waiting to be a blessing. People need the Lord. They need to know that uh, and taste that the Lord is good. And the only one they're going to see is, is a Christian for now. Lord, we ask for grace. We ask for grace. Stir us up, Lord. Thank you for this time. In Jesus' name. Ahem. <clears throat>